talking about the different models of practice and the pros and cons of the different things. And now we're finally down to the independent practice. The, the, the physician or a couple physicians that is in their own little practice. And I want to talk a little bit about the trends as I've seen them and see what, what you're seeing. Um, and I know what I think the reasons are from my end of things. I'd like to hear what, what you have to say from your, your firm's experience. First of all, for the viewers, I think what you're talking about is primary care and internal medicine and how they primarily see Medicare patients. Yes. Because that's most of the patients in Florida are Medicare patients. Yes. And the two models being that you get paid per visit or per service provided. And those doctors who work in that area, in order to keep their income near where it was or at where it was, they no longer can only see patients as a doctor. They need to have a nurse practitioner and they need to have a physician assistant. They need to have a blood lab. They need to have a pharmacy. They need to do all these different things to try to keep their income where it was. And see many more patients. Right, and see more patients. So the, the other thing you're referring to, which is what your organization does a lot more of, so you're very familiar with it, is that those patients who go to a Medicare HMO get care and get their drugs paid for to a great degree and maybe even other benefits. Yeah. More benefits than Medicare. And benefits. then the, the HMO is willing to pay the doctors a set amount, basically that the HMO puts this amount on the table. And if, the, if that amount on the table, which is intended to pay for hospital visits, everything. facilities and everything, if there's a lot left over at the end of the year, then the doctors riding that herd of patients make a nice big bonus. And if more is spent than should have been spent, then the doctors riding that herd of patients are supposed to write a big check to the HMO, although that well, rarely actually happens. Contract, yes. So on average, a physician who knows how to handle risk contracts, by my experience, makes four to six times what a fee-for-service primary care doctor makes. And many doctors who have never done risk contracts assume that it's all about withholding care and being a gatekeeper and they view that all their patients will be limping around in the shopping center because they won't be able to get a knee replacement or they'll die early or they'll walk around without hair and the conscientious doctors who resisted it for many years and are now doing it are finding that that's wrong. It is wrong. That there's so much profitability that you can afford to give every patient who needs a knee replacement a knee replacement. Maybe you won't make $2 million a year, maybe you'll make six fifty a year, but you'll be able to spend the money you need to spend, and you will also be incentivized for calling the specialists who waste money and saying, don't waste money anymore. Yeah. And that's, that is what's happening, and that's the one positive thing that's happening in the American medical economy because it saves money for the government. Well, not only saves and the patients money, but the patients are actually, are thri many yeah. patients are thriving on it. Yeah. And the way I see it, and I'm not going to stay on my on my soapbox, but is that what that is? That's what it is. It's a soapbox. Um, it's the right care for the right reasons at the right time. It's it's patient engagement and getting the patient involved in their own care so they understand why you're asking them to do something or not do something, why you're telling them that this medication is better than that medication or this is what we need to do or that's what we need to do and actually it's more care because you take the time to teach them what they need to know. You could actually afford to see every patient every 90 days, yes. care about them, yes. call them at home. Yes. There's so much money being provided that yes. you can afford to do that and that saves them hospitalizations, it saves them procedures. And it's so much more rewarding for the provider. But it has to be done ethically and methodically. Yes. And that the doctors who have not done it ethically and methodically have made a bad name for it. Exactly. And there's there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot, there's of, a lot of abuse in all areas. So well, that, that's why the laws have changed over the years. The managed care that we see today is not the managed care of 10 years ago. Right. 15 years ago, 20 but, years but ago. I will, I've been around long enough right. to see the whole But I will arc. say that the physician who is still fee-for-service primary care if she is with a well-tuned ACO, 
she could earn another quarter million to half a million a year from the well-tuned ACO. So it's all on their participation agreement. Right. It's all coming around. But that well-tuned ACO, you know what they're doing? They're, they're using doing all the they're principles. rationing care. No, they're doing using they're all of the they're not rationing care. They're using all of the principles of a well-oiled managed care practice. Right. Right. It's the same thing, only. It's a very similar thing, yeah. but it's one foot in the water instead of diving in. Yeah, true.